Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Uh, still sick, but hey, slowly getting better. Today is uh, May 17, 2022. I was going to do a book review on the Bible as history, but it is still under copyright. So I decided to do another book, um, which is really pretty good. Uh, the name of the book is Judah's Scepter and Joseph's Birthright by Reverend J.H. Allen, A-L-L-E-N. It's an analysis of the prophecies of scripture in regard to the royal family of Judah and the many nations of Israel. Now, I do not like using uh, the title Reverend. I find it extremely distasteful. So let's find out why. And the reason I don't like um, Reverend as a title, for a human anyways, is in Psalms, 119 I'm sorry I'm sorry I'm I'm wrong Psalms 111 Psalms 111 and chapter 111 and verse 9 Listen to this He sent redemption unto his people Now who's that the Lord He hath commanded his covenant forever Holy and reverend is his name holy and reverend so when you hear the pope calling himself holy father or you know a baptist preacher saying his name is reverend so and so uh i i i just i don't know uh, i'm not i'm not there so um there were 12 tribes and actually Joseph's tribes were split up into Ephraim and Manasseh, which had uh, different prophecies. But every tribe had their own prophecy. And Mark Twain, his real name was Samuel Clemens, but he was known as Mark Twain. He said, the reason I don't believe the Bible is because the Bible says that the Jews would be doing this, 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 and this, and the other, and they're not. So he, that's why he didn't believe the Bible. He says the Bible's promises that God made are not coming true. But the thing is, he didn't know where to look. He was looking in the wrong place. That's why he didn't see the promises being fulfilled. And matter of fact, something along those similar lines caused me to walk away from the Lord in high school. So something, something along those lines. Yeah. So Judah was to be the tribe of the kings. And Joseph was given the birthright. The birthright was a double portion of blessings. Now, you got to remember that um, Jacob, his name was chained to Israel by the Lord. Israel means rules with God or prince with God. And he had... 12 sons by four different women. So, and they each had different characteristics. So, let's take a look at that. Okay, scepter, noun, Latin, septum, Greek, from, to, send, or thrust. You know, like you would thrust a... Um, a spear or a sword. 
uh, coinciding with Latin Scipio, that is a shoot or rod. A staff or baton borne by kings on solemn occasions as a badge of authority. The appropriate ensign of royalty, an ensign of higher antiquity than the crown. So it's a symbol that's even older than a crown. Uh, royal power or authority or to assume the scepter. And that is found in Genesis 4.9. The scepter, you know, rulership, shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet till Shiloh come. And that's Genesis 4.1. Now, I believe that Shiloh and Shalom, which they'll tell you means peace, uh, and Jerusal Jerusalem, or Salem, so Shalom, Salem, Shiloh, I think are all the same word, just different ways to pronounce with different spellings. So, well, let's face it, people, some people might say, well, Bob, you're wrong, but that's all right, you know, everybody's got an opinion. Uh, I'm not the final authority, that's for sure. How do you say tomato? Tomato, tomato. Uh, you ever heard of the Caribbean islands? Caribbean, the Caribbean. Uh, is it the crow or is it the crow? You know, I've heard it both ways. Laboratory, laboratory. Uh, you know, uh, England and Europe, they, I think in England, Europe, they call it laboratory, but here in the U.S. it's laboratory. Is it right? I don't know. Frankenstein, or is it Frankenstein? I don't know. So, a uh, scepter, a verb, transitive, to invest with royal authority or with the ensign of authority. So, there you go. A scepter is a sign of rulership. You know, like a staff. So, all right, let's go to... Uh, let's take a look at Genesis 49. All right, Genesis 4, 49, verse 1. And Jacob called his sons and said, Gather yourselves together, that I may tell you that that which shall befall you in the last days. Just remember, every day is another day closer to the end times. I know people have been saying, oh, the end times, the end times for the last, you know, almost 2,000 years. But uh, there are some prophecies being fulfilled that just makes me think we're getting really close. Um, so, verse 2. Gather yourselves together and hear ye sons of Jacob, and hearken unto Israel your father. Reuben, thou art my firstborn, my might and the beginning of my strength, the excellency of dignity, dignity and the excellency of power. Uh, Reuben was, uh, I guess, technically the firstborn, but um, he did a no-no. He uh, decided he wanted one of his father's uh, wives. I guess daddy should have noticed he had an interest in girls and got him a wife or something, you know. But, you know, when you got 12 kids running around plus daughters, uh, there was at least uh, one daughter that I can think of, Dinah. Maybe more. Than, there might be more than one. I, I can't. You know, I, I can't remember everything. Um, so Reuben, uh, uh, verse 4, Unstable as water, thou shalt not excel, because thou wentest up to thy father's bed, then defilest thou it. He went up to my couch. So Reuben is not going to excel. 
Simeon and Levi are brethren. Instruments of cruelty are in their habitations. You know, it makes you wonder about the uh, Spanish Inquisition. I don't know. It just pops into my mind. I'm not saying it's true. I'm just throwing that out there. So, O oh, my soul, come not thou into their secret, unto their assembly. Mine honor, be not thou united, for in their anger they slew a man, and in their self-will they dig down a wall. Cursed be their anger, for it was fierce, and their wrath, for it was cruel. I will divide them in Jacob and scatter them in Israel. And let's face it, Levi, what was Levi? Levi was the tribe that God set apart for the priesthood. So Levi was the tribe that served the Lord in the tabernacle and in the temple and of course they intermarried with the Canaanites like all the rest of the tribes did to a certain extent um, but uh, that was they were set apart by the Lord separated segregated sanctified and um, that's what it meant sanctification be set apart Uh, let's see. And Levi was scattered in Israel. All right, so here we go. Uh, 8, verse 8, Genesis 49, 8. Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Hmm. So in other words, he's going to be very skillful in war. And I'm so sick of hearing churches tell everybody, oh, you know, well, we, we're, all, we're all the same. God loves everybody. You know, God doesn't have any enemies. He wants everybody to be saved. Well, Israel has enemies. But uh, if you're thinking that little antichrist group over in the Middle East well <laughs> you're gonna be like Mark Twain you know the Bible doesn't make any sense well it's because you're looking in the wrong place buddy boy you know if you own a Chevrolet and you buy Ford parts and they don't fit uh, well guess what well gee I bought a carburetor but it doesn't fit right well, of course it doesn't fit right, you idiot. You, you're looking in the, you, you got the wrong thing. You're looking in the wrong place. You know, get a Chevy or get a Ford, you know, but you can't buy Ford for Chevy and Chevy for Ford. It don't work. Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. That means rulership, people. What tribe was Christ from reckoned by the father? Now, Joseph was not the father of Jesus. But reckoned by his lineage, Christ was of the tribe of Judah. And Christ is king and that's what happens when you have a king you're going to bow down before the king or maybe the king will decide to cut your head off right that's how it worked in the old days so and just remember the paul said that the powers that be are ordained of the lord i might be paraphrasing that a little bit but uh you got a wicked government look in the mirror of the spiritual how the the people are and it's a reflection politics are a reflection on the spiritual uh state of the people a uh, pastor once said that to me and it's always stuck with me and he was right you got a righteous people you'll have righteous rulers 
you have a wicked people, you're going to have wicked rulers. It's just the way it goes. Judah is a lion's whelp. What is Christ called? The lion of the tribe of Judah? Oh, yeah. And what is? what do you think of with a lion? Strength, right? King of the jungle. Judah is a lion's whelp. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. He stooped down, he crouched as a lion, and as an old lion, who shall rise him up? Yeah, you don't want to rouse up. You don't want to rouse up a lion, you know? You ever heard that expression, let sleeping dogs lie? Yeah. Verse 10, here we go. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh come, and unto him shall the gathering of the people be. So, Christ is going to be the ruler from Judah. And Moses originally was given the law, but didn't Christ change? I wouldn't say change, but, well, he fulfilled the sacrificial laws. But didn't he actually make the laws even harder? You know, Moses uh, was given the stone tablets and said uh, not to commit adultery with your neighbor's wife. And Jesus said, if you just look at a woman with lust in your heart, you've committed adultery with her already. And you're guilty. So Jesus made it actually even more difficult pointing out that even though we don't go next door and uh, we're doing our neighbor's wife when the husband's away on a long trip, you know, that just because you're not doing that, just, you know, checking her out in the garden, uh, you're already guilty. And I think pretty much all guys are guilty of that. So, and some gals too. Let's not leave the ladies out of this. Um, and who's going to be gathering the people? When Christ returns, he's going to gather his sheep. And the goats are going to get burned. Sorry about that. I forgot I even had the uh, stupid dryer running. I'm not 100% with it today, believe me. But Christ will gather his people. One time at the end of the tribulation, when the last saint has been saved, not before. These people think they're going to fly away before the bad times happen, need to read the book of Acts. They, they just, I don't know. You know, Christ is going to have a lot of things to say to people. No, oh, Jesus, why didn't you take us in the pre-trib rapture? Uh, why didn't you read the book? People died to give you that book. Uh, I didn't understand it. Well, in James 1, it says, If any of you lack understanding, let him ask of the Lord, you know, for wisdom. I'm paraphrasing, but, you know. Oh, well, I never read that. You know, I, there's going to be a lot of churchgoers, I think, that are going to be thrown into the lake of fire. Uh, that's my opinion, I guess. Uh, just people are, you know, they know more about the TV guide than they do, uh, well, maybe not the TV guide anymore, but they know about more about their favorite sports shows or soap operas or TV dramas or whatever stupid sitcom is on. You know, let me tell you something. Um, I remember when I took English in college uh, in the late, towards the late 80s, mid to late 80s, um, the instructor had us bring uh, advertisements when, when they had print advertisements. He says, bring in advertisements, specifically um uh, tobacco, cigarette, 
and especially liquor ads. And he says, I want everybody in this class to bring in at least three. So when you uh, looked at the liquor ads, you know, whatever scotch or wine or whatever, uh, you'd have a guy and a girl there holding a glass of, let's say, whiskey or something. And the teacher says, look at this picture carefully. And you'd take a magnifying glass and you'd look at it. And I noticed in the ice cubes, there were images of skulls. I mean, it, and it wasn't just me. Everybody would see it. Uh, and it wasn't just one or two things. I mean, it was in almost all of them. And so they call that subliminal advertising. But yeah, they... Uh, that was an interesting uh, wake-up call. Matter of fact, uh, Gail Ripplinger, who wrote a wonderful book on the King James Bible, um, defended, she was in advertising, and they were actually teaching her how to do that in college. And she says, this is evil and deceptive. And she got out of advertising and did fine arts and I think she's had a master's degree or something I don't know she's one heck of a researcher but um, you'll hear people uh, complain about her and you know all I know is her uh, her book on defending the King James Bible was better than anything that I had in Bible College so all right, let's go back to Genesis 49, 10. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh come, and unto him shall the gathering of the people be, binding his foal unto the vine. And remember, Jesus was um, went into Jerusalem on the foal of an ass. Oh, yeah. And what's the vine? The vine is... Uh, Basically, Jesus said he is the vine. Or, yeah, he was the main, something about, I for, uh, I'm, my brain's not working good, but um, he's the vine, we're the branches, or something like that. You know, he's the main source. And we're just the little branches that come from the source. Um, and the vine was a symbol of Israel. Binding his foal unto the vine and his ass's colt unto the choice vine. And, you know, that's... Read what uh, the entrance into Jerusalem. Um, when Jesus went into Jerusalem, you know. Uh, the foal of, foal of an ass and an ass's colt. He washed his garments in wine and his clothes in the blood of grapes. What did Jesus tell us at the Last Supper? Uh, uh, this uh, told him his, the bread was his body and the wine was his blood. And if you read Revelation, uh, we're going to be given white garments in um, washed in his blood. I guess I should go into that, shouldn't I? Yeah. All right, yeah, Bob, we don't believe you. You better prove to us that Israel's the uh, the vine and the vineyard. Oh, okay, no problem. You better be skeptical. Isaiah 5 and verse 7. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel. The vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel. And the men of Judah his pleasant plant. And he looked for judgment, but but behold oppression for righteousness but behold a cry all right let's go to matthew 21 real quick uh let's see verse 33 here ye an uh hear another parable there was a certain householder now this is jesus speaking uh there was a certain householder which planted a vineyard uh. And hedged it round about, and digged a wine press in it, and built a tower, and let it out to husbandmen, and went into a far country. Where's the far country? Uh, heaven, right? 
Who's the husbandman? Israel. And when the time of the fruit drew near, he sent his servants to the husbandmen that they might receive the fruits of it. And the husbandmen took his servants and beat one and killed another and stoned another. Again, he sent other servants more than the first, and they did unto them likewise. But last of all, he sent unto them his son, his only begotten son, saying, They will reverence my son. But when the husbandmen saw the son, they said among themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him, and let us seize on his inheritance. Yeah, let's kill the heir, and we'll steal everything from this guy, right? And they caught him and cast him out of the vineyard and slew him. When the Lord, therefore, the vineyard cometh, what will he do unto those husbandmen? They said unto him, He will miserably destroy those wicked men and will let out his vineyard unto other husbandmen, which shall render him the fruits in their seasons. Jesus saith unto them, Did ye never read in the scriptures the stones which the builders rejected, the same as become the head of the corner? This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Now, who do you think Jesus is talking to here? He's talking to the Pharisees. Yeah. Yeah, the group that uh, um, rhymes with news, you know, like a newspaper. But you put a J in front of the news. Yeah. Instead of an N. Yeah, uh, that group. Therefore say I unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. And guess what? In 70 AD, um, the temple was absolutely destroyed by the Roman army, and um, there was not one stone left upon another of that temple that was not thrown down. Sorry, the Wailing Wall is not part of the temple. Otherwise, Jesus is a liar in Matthew 24 which I'm going to pick Jesus over the you-know-who's any day of the week when it comes to who's, tr who's, a, who's telling the truth and who's lying. The kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. What nation? Greece, the Greeks. Uh, you know, the New Testament was written in Greek for a reason, and this tells you why. The kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. Greece went all over Eastern Europe and spread the gospel. Did the you-know-who's in the Middle East ever spread the gospel? No. No. You know, there was a stupid um, churchgoer that went over to the Middle East, a certain nation, you know, uh, that it's actually illegal to preach Jesus. Yeah. And this guy was on a tourist, a tour, tour bus or a tourist group or whatever. And he made the mistake of going to a is Ray Lee a soldier and started telling him about Jesus. Well, he got a rifle butt to the mouth knocked out some of his teeth, was arrested and thrown in jail for a while. Eventually, they let him go and kicked him out and says, go go back to America. We don't want you here. Um, he learned a valuable lesson that day. Yeah, I think he did. You know, he thought, oh, I'm going to tell them about Jesus. Yeah, well, guess what? Jesus told them about Jesus and they stuck him. They wanted him killed. Um, yeah, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof and whosoever shall fall on this stone. Remember, Jesus is the rock. Whosoever shall fall on this stone shall be broken, but on whomsoever it shall fall, it shall grind him to powder. And when the chief priests and Pharisees heard this parable, they perceived that he spake of them. But when they sought to lay hands on him, they feared the multitude because they took him for a prophet. Oh, yeah. 
They wanted to kill him, but they were afraid of the people. All right, well, didn't we read about a cult in uh, Genesis 49? Yeah, uh, that's in Mark 11, uh, verse 1. And when they came nigh to Jerusalem unto Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, he sendeth forth two of his disciples... And saith unto them, Go your way into the village over against you, and as soon as ye be entered in, ye shall find a colt tied, wherein never man set, loose him and bring him. And if any man say unto you, Why do ye this? You know, uh, what are you doing? Why do ye this? Say ye that the Lord hath need of him, and straightway he will send him hither. And they went their way and found the colt tied by the door without in a place where Two ways met, and they loose him. And certain of them which stood there said unto them, What do ye loosening the, loosing the colt? And they said unto them, Even as Jesus had commanded, and they let them go. And they brought the colt to Jesus and cast their garments on him, and he sat upon him. And many spread their garments in the way, and others cut down branches off the trees and strawed them in the way. And they that went before and they that followed cried, saying, Hosanna, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Blessed be the kingdom of our father David that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And Jesus entered into Jerusalem and into the, into the temple. And when he had looked round about upon all things, and now the even tie was come, he went out unto Beth, Bethany with the twelve. And, uh, and on the morrow, when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing a fig tree afar off, having leaves, he came, if haply, he might find anything thereon. You know, he's looking for a fig tree. Is there any fruit on there? But he didn't find anything. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for the time of figs was not yet. And Jesus answered and said unto it, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. Well, guess what? The fig tree was the symbol of Judah. You know, the temple, the temple sacrifices. No more fruit. 70 AD, the, the Roman army destroyed uh, Judaism. Totally destroyed it. There's no temple anymore. No animal sacrifices. Gone. No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And his disciples heard it. The fig tree was cursed. No more fruit from uh, Judah, as in temple worship. Jesus cursed it. Oh, yeah. All right. So let's see. Let's go to Revelation 7 uh, 12 saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, Which are these which are arrayed or dressed in white robes? And whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. You know, it's like, dude, what are you asking me for? You know the, que you know the answer to this question. Sir, thou knowest. And he said unto me, these are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore are they before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple, and he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. So, uh, let's see, what else did I... Uh, let's see. All right, so let's go to Genesis 49, verse 10. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh come, and unto him shall the gathering of the people be, binding his foal unto the vine, and his ass's colt unto the choice vine. He washed his garments in wine, and his clothes in the blood of grapes. You know, people are stupid. They go to church. You know, they don't bother reading. They're, look at this. This is the first book of the Bible. And it's loaded with prophecy. Just Genesis. 
I mean, Genesis is the foundation. You got a house and you don't put down a good foundation, you know, you get strong winds and next thing you know, that house is going to be your burial ground. And that's where a lot of people run into trouble. They listen to pastors and they don't check things for themselves. So I have a healthy distrust of almost everything. So, uh, verse 12. His eyes shall be red with wine and his teeth white with milk. All right. Zebulun shall dwell at the haven of the sea and he shall be for a haven of ships and his border shall be unto Zidon. Issachar. Now, Zebulun is another tribe of Israel. Issachar, another tribe of Israel. Issachar is a strong ass crouching down between two burdens. And he saw the rest was good and the land that it was pleasant. And he bowed his shoulder to bear and became a servant unto tribute. Dan shall judge his people as one of the tribes of Israel. Dan shall be a serpent by the way, an adder in the path that biteth the horses, the horse heels, so that his rider shall fall backward. Uh, if you don't know what an adder is, it's, uh, well, they got a snake in the, I think it's in the Middle East. It's called a death adder. Highly venomous. That thing bites you and it'll live up to its name, death adder. Uh, very dangerous. I mean, it's, it's up there with cobras and, you know, nasty. Yeah, you don't want to, you know, an adder in the path. Uh, let's see. Verse 18. I have waited for thy salvation, O Lord. Gad, another tribe of Israel. A troop shall overcome him, but he shall overcome at the last. Out of Asher, another tribe, his bread shall be fat, and he shall yield royal dainties. What is uh, royal dainties? You know, like uh, Danish pastries, I guess. I don't know. I've had real Danish pastries. Matter of fact, I had Danish pastries from the royal baker uh, from the, uh, the king of Denmark. Yeah, back in Miami. I knew him personally. Some of the nicest people you ever meet in your life. Yeah, he applied to go to the United States after World War II and said, I'm getting out of here. I'm sick and tired of Germans' wars. So... Yeah, everybody tells me how great uh, A. Dolph was. But uh, you talk to people that lived through the war in Germany occupied territories and they tell you a different story. I don't know. You know, and these people were the nicest people I ever met in my life. They treated me like I was a son. Matter of fact, I learned probably more about life from them than I did my own parents. My dad was very, um, he was very distant. Uh, probably the, um, he was a World War II combat vet. But these people, they, they taught me a lot about life. They really did. Wonderful people. Um... Verse 21, Naphtali, another tribe, is a hind let loose, he giveth goodly words. Joseph, another tribe, now remember, Joseph had two sons, and his two sons got a blessing each. We'll cover that. We're going to cover that. Joseph is a fruitful bough, even a fruitful bough by a well whose branches run over the wall. In other words, Joseph is going to spread out. The archers have sorely grieved him and shot at him and hated him. Who's archers? Uh, you listen, you know, to modern day preachers, they'll say, well, you know, yeah, that was back in the Old Testament. Now God loves everybody. No, these people hated Joseph. They hated him. Verse 24, but his bow abode in strength. And the arms of his hands were made strong by the hands of his mighty God of Jacob. From thence is the shepherd, the stone of Israel. 
even by the God of thy father who shall help thee and by the Almighty who shall bless thee with blessings of heaven above, blessings of the deep that lieth under blessings of the breasts and of the womb. And nowadays we abort them. We abort our blessings from the Lord. 26. The blessings of thy father have prevailed above the blessings of thy progenitors unto the utmost bound of the everlasting hills. They shall be on the head of Joseph and on the crown of the head of him that was separate from his brethren. Benjamin, another tribe, shall raven as a wolf. In the morning he shall devour the prey, and at night he shall divide the spoil. All these are the twelve tribes of Israel. And this is it that their father spake unto them and blessed them. Everyone according to his blessing, he blessed them. So, there you go. All right, everybody, let's go to Genesis 48. And uh, this book that I'm getting ready to read is specifically on Judah and the royalty aspect, and then Joseph's birthright, which means he's going to be very fruitful and spread all over the world. And believe it or not, this was a library book, and uh, it was printed, last printing that I have available is... Uh, Beauchamp, A.A. A. Beauchamp, B-E-A-U-C-H-A-M-P, Boston, Mass., 1917. And this was a taken from the library of the University of Illinois in 1933. So it's a copy of a library book. You know, this is the kind of stuff they taught 100 years ago in the, in the United States. I mean, really. And this book, um, <laughs> unbelievable. I think this book was written around the, I don't remember, this is the fourth printing. Okay, so if the fourth printing was in 1917, uh, this is probably 18 something or other. But um, I don't know, I don't know how old. Yeah, I don't know how old this book really is. I'll have to look it up. But it's it's this is not a new book by any means. Uh, matter of fact, let me look that up real quick. All right, before I read this about uh, Joseph's double blessing on Ephraim and Manasseh, um, according to Wikipedia, Wikipedia, um, John Harden Allen. He was born in 1847 and died in 1930. Was an American minister associated with the Church of God, holiness, you know, it's Pentecostal, and British Israelism. He came from Illinois, later moving to Missouri in 1879. And let's see, he was originally a pastor in Methodist Episcopal Church, uh, later became a pastor in Mes Wes Wesleyan, Methodist Church in California. He was one of the co-founders of the Church of God, Holiness, in 1883, and evangelized throughout the West, and eventually moved to Pasadena, where he died. Um, so, yeah. Uh, he's best known for the book titled Judah Scepter and Joseph's Birthright, 1902 which stated it is an analysis of the prophecies of the scriptures in regard to the royal family of Judah and many nations of Israel, the lost 10 tribes. Well, Bob's note here. Yeah, the lost 10 tribes are only lost to the churches. God didn't lose his 10 tribes. If you believe the Bible, which I, I, I do, yeah. Let's see, what does the book of James chapter 1 say? Verse 1, chapter 1, verse 1. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greetings, or greeting. 
Yeah. Um, God, God didn't lose his tribes. Only the church has lost the tribes. Yeah. And they want you to think that one little antichrist tribe that fulfills virtually none of the prophecies of the Bible uh, are Israel. Yeah, right. Um, let's see. The Baptist messenger, I'm going to quote, reported, this is one of the most interesting volumes we have read in many a day, and we confess that the arguments produced by Mr. Allen seem to be unanswerable. Of course they are. They're unanswerable. It is far more thrilling than Western fiction. The description of the scarlet thread, the royal remnant, and the part played by Jeremiah in the preservation for the ruler for God's throne will cause you to lose sleep rather than go to bed without knowing the income. Outcome. Outcome. Unquote. Uh, it says, somebody must have, a, a Christian or something must have written this, this thing in Wikipedia. How did it... Uh, uh, <laughs> This is great. I actually like this. Uh, overview of publication. When this book first appeared, Britannia, you know, England, the United Kingdom, Great Britain. Yeah. Britannia still ruled the waves and the sun was shining on the British Empire, which is why many came to believe that the British were God's people. And an introduction, introduction to the book claimed that a notable and immensely significant sign of the times is the revived revival of interest in the Old Testament prophecy that is beginning to be strongly felt in Anglo-Saxon countries. All right. Uh, this book presents facts and considerations which everyone must sometime take into account, for they are destined to become important factors in world affairs. So, uh, yeah, I'm surprised this article doesn't uh say oh stupid white people believe all this stuff you know or something like that i mean after all you know we we know the israels the indians right the american indians right or the chinese or you know yeah but uh all right uh let's see let's go to uh yeah i'm still sick Terrible. Um, Genesis chapter 48, verse 1. All right, so Joseph has been in Egypt for a while. He got married, has two kids, uh, Ephraim and Manasseh. And his father, Jacob Israel, is getting sick, getting ready to die. And Jacob Israel is going to give his blessing on the children. So, that's Bob's little commentary. Verse 1, And it came to pass after these things that one told Joseph, Behold, thy father is sick, and he took with him his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. And uh, real quick, uh, some think Ephraim is Great Britain and some think Manasseh is basically uh, America. I don't know. Could be. Uh, it's a lot more possible than uh, the Antichrist over the Middle East, if you ask me. But yeah. All right, verse 2. And one told Jacob and said, Behold, uh, thy son Joseph cometh unto thee, and Israel strengthened himself and sat upon the bed. And Jacob said unto Joseph, God Almighty appeared unto me at Luz in the land of Canaan and blessed me, and said unto me, Behold, I will make thee fruitful and multiply thee, and will make of thee a multitude of people, and will give this land to thy seed after thee for an everlasting possession. Bob's note here. Is a few million you-know-whos in the Middle East uh, exceedingly fruitful, multiplying? I mean, there was probably almost that many people that came out of Egypt during the time of Moses and the Exodus. You know, a few million here and there. 
what is 12 to 18 million people out of the 7 or so billion? And by the way, if you don't know what a billion is, it's 1,000 millions. So 7,000 millions. Uh, what is like 18 million people out of that many? I mean, what is that percentage? Like 0.001 or something like that? I, I, I don't know. I don't want to look it up. I hate math. Um, does that sound like God being blessing them and fruitful and multiplying? Uh, doesn't sound like it to me. And this book will go into more details. Yeah, it, it's going to, you know. Uh, let's see. Verse 5. And now thy two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, which were born unto thee in the land of Egypt before I came unto thee in Egypt are mine as Reuben and Simeon they shall be mine and thy issue children which thou begettest after them shall be thine and shall be called after the name of their brethren in their inheritance and as for me when I came from Padan Rachel died by me in the land of Canaan in the way when yet there was but a little way to come unto Ephrath, and I buried her there in the way of Ephrath, the same as Bethlehem. And Israel beheld Joseph's sons and said, Who are these? And Joseph said unto his father, These are my sons, whom God hath given me in this place. And he said, Bring them, I pray thee, unto me, and I will bless them. Now the eyes of Israel... Jacob Israel, were dim for age, so that he could not see. And he brought them near unto him, and he kissed them and embraced them. And Israel said unto Joseph, I had not thought to see thy face, and lo, God hath showed me also thy seed, thy children. And Joseph brought them out from between his knees, and he bowed himself with his face to the earth. So evidently, these are young children. Uh, and Joseph took them both, Ephraim in his right hand, uh, and let's see, Ephraim in his right hand toward Israel's left hand, and Manasseh in his left hand toward Israel's right hand and brought them near unto him and Israel stretched out his right hand and laid it upon Ephraim's head who was the younger you ever heard of the right hand he's my right hand man and his left hand upon Manasseh's head guiding his hands wittingly for Manasseh was the firstborn um so here it is, the firstborn is supposed to get a double blessing, but Israel is crossing his hands, and there's going to be a reason for that. And by the way, people, um, the firstborn was supposed to be a blessing, and guess what? It, it didn't end up being that way. Thank you, Satan. I mean, after all, Cain was firstborn. Was he a blessing? Uh, no. Uh, Esau was firstborn of Jacob, Israel. Was he a blessing? No. God hated Esau. Um, Christ was also the firstborn, so he broke the curse of the... Um, well, I'm not sure exactly how to say it, but... Firstborn was supposed to be a blessing, but it ended up being a curse in the Old Testament anyways. And according to the Bible, the firstborn was supposed to be um, dedicated to the Lord, whether it was an animal for sacrifice or uh, service or what have you. I was my father's firstborn, so maybe there's some truth to that. I don't know. Uh, forgive me, I'm still sick, but uh, let's see. 
Uh, 14. And Israel stretched out his right hand and laid it upon Ephraim's head, who was the younger. So the right hand was on the younger and his left hand upon Manasseh's head, giving his hands wittingly for Manasseh was the firstborn. And he blessed Joseph and said, God, before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac did walk, the God which fed me all my life long unto this day, the angel which redeemed me from all evil. Bless the lads and let my name be named on them. What name is that? Israel rules with God, Prince of God. And the name of my fathers, Abraham and Isaac. And let them grow into a multitude in the midst of the earth. There's a few million, you know who's a multitude in the midst of the earth? Uh, no. Yeah, Mark Twain, you know, he said, the reason I don't believe the Bible is because the you know who's don't fulfill the prophecies. Either it's not true or God lied. Well, sorry, uh, Mr. Clemens, but you were looking in the wrong place along with a lot of other people. So, yeah. And, you know, realize this is uh, this book's over 100 years old uh, as written, as written. So, verse 17. And when Joseph saw that his father laid his right hand upon the head of Ephraim, it displeased him. And he held up his father's hand to remove it from Ephraim's head unto Manasseh's head. And Joseph said unto his father, Not so, my father, for this is the firstborn. Put thy right hand upon his head. And his father refused and said, I know it, my son. I know it. He also shall become a people. And he also shall be great. But truly his younger brother shall be greater than he and his seed shall become a multitude of nations. So, the older brother is considered England. The younger brother is considered the U.S. You know, when Germany and England were fighting, it was always the U.S. that bailed out England. We always listen to the you-know-whos and get involved in killing our brothers when we should have been... I don't know. I had a history book written... Um, what year was that written? It was written in like the uh, 1920s. Sadly, I lost it. I lost my library like four different, three, four different times. I've had an incredible library. I'm telling you. I'd go to the used bookstore, which doesn't exist anymore, and uh, find books for two, three dollars, and you know, go walk out with twenty, thirty dollars worth of books, Bible books. But uh, in According to the census, in uh, during World War One, twenty-five percent of the United States' population was of Germanic extraction. And being that almost all of Europeans' royalty was Germans, you know, the King of England, uh, King George, perhaps you heard of him. He was German. Yeah, the King of England was German. Figure that one out. Judah's scepter, people. Judah's scepter. But 25% um, of the United States' population was of Germanic extraction. And, and, and during World War I, the majority of Americans wanted to go to war, not against Germany, but against England. After all, Germany didn't burn down our capital in the War of 1812. You know, but hey, God's hand is in charge, right? So, uh, Germany gave us the printing press, Gutenberg, first book printed, the Bible. And uh, Germany 
was, during the time of Luther, one of the most Christian countries in Europe. Yeah. Uh, so, are a few million you-know-whos in the Middle East a multitude of nations? I don't think so. I'm surprised I'm still on YouTube. I really am. And by the way, World Truth Videos has been dead for the last couple days. I don't know if their website's been scrubbed or if they're just having problems. I don't know. And his father refused and said, I know it, my son, I know it. He shall also, he also shall become a people and he also shall be great. But truly his younger brother shall be greater than he and his seed shall become a multitude of nations. You know, prior, uh, uh, prior to World War II, England had this most uh, powerful navy in World War II at the beginning of the war. United States was number two. Japan was number three. After World Pearl Harbor, England was number one, Japan was number two, and the United States was number three. At the end of World War II, England was number two. Unless, of course, you count all the uh, Japanese ships at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean. But, yeah. Um, do you know at the end of World War II, the United States had over 100 aircraft carriers alone. Yeah, 100 aircraft carriers. 100. A lot of them were called uh, escort carriers, CVE. Um, they were slow, they were small, but they used them for when there was convoys of troops and uh, supplies. And, you know, you could fly planes out ahead of the convoy and look for submarines and attack them. Or if there was other ships available, uh, other enemy ships and, you know, attack them. Uh, I think a standard, what they called a fleet carrier, which was a, a large, fast aircraft carrier, hold about 80, uh, approximately 80 planes, whereas a, uh, uh, the escort carriers carried about 35, maybe 40, maybe 35, something like that. You know, they could still do damage, but they just weren't... Uh, they didn't have much protection. Uh, once an enemy ship got in range, uh, the carriers were in trouble. So, yes, I was very interested in World War II. I mean, I, I look at history and I see God's hand in it. And what do they call history? His story. And it is. The powers that be are ordained of God. All right, um, verse 20. And he, Israel, blessed them that day, saying, In thee shall Israel bless, saying, God make thee as Ephraim and as Manasseh. And he set Ephraim before Manasseh. And Israel said unto Joseph, Behold, I die. But God shall be with you. And bring you again unto the land of your fathers. Moreover, I have given to thee one portion above thy brethren, which I took out of the hand of the Amorite with the sword and with my bow. So Joseph was given one portion above the other, um, his other uh, brothers. His other 11 brothers. So he was given a double portion. One for Ephraim, one for Manasseh. Now, all the things that I've covered are probably, I'm, I'm certain they're going to be covered in this book. Um, you got to realize, I haven't read this book in, no oh, uh, 30 years. Uh, it's got to be around, if not more, I don't know. Um, all I know is I was... When I came back to the Lord, late 89, um, I was devouring books like crazy. 
And I'm glad, so glad that the Lord let, let, uh, showed me what Bible to use and what church to uh, study from. I'm glad, very much. I had a good mentor. And, uh, and I praise the Lord for that. Uh, sometimes the Lord has to really destroy everything you have before you have no other options but to look up, repent, and come back to him. And I, that's how I was. So, all right, well, uh, this is just my introduction. This is not even uh, the introduction to the... Um, uh, uh, the the book. I'm not even getting ready to do that yet. So uh, the next time it'll be the uh, beginning of the book. I don't know if I'll read the preface or uh, you know or if I'll read the uh, yeah maybe I'll read the yeah I'll read the preface. Alrighty. Uh, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.